Welcome to Silver Fork School in Kybers, California, an unincorporated community with a population of less than 200 people. It might not surprise you then that Silver Fork, a kindergarten through eighth grade school, has only nine students who do all of their learning in one cozy schoolhouse. So what I would like you guys to do is to form a square. It's really a one building schoolhouse with two rooms inside that building. Uh, it has two teachers and they split the duties. One teaches language arts. Why would that be a proper name? It has a capitalized R. And the other teaches math and science. We're going to find out how heavy water is today, all right? The nine students, ranging between first and seventh grades, learn together. The classes are split by subject matter rather than grade level. You know, I have nine grade levels to plan for, but then I don't have 30 papers at every grade level to correct. So it, it's easier in some ways and it's harder in some ways. I do not know how many kids were in my last school, but there was like almost a million. When it comes to being a student 100. at Silver Fork, Madison Morgan, the only fifth grader at her school, says there's not the focus on grade level as much as progress. So each of the students receives the level of instruction they need instead of what their grade level might dictate. Much better. It's kind of all mixed together, so you don't really know if you're in a grade or not anymore. But it's actually really good, though. I get more attention, you get better grades at it, you get lots of better stuff, so yeah. While this school may not sound so ordinary, teachers and students say in many ways it is. A typical day here isn't much different than what you might see on a larger campus. We come to school and then we'll have language arts and then we'll go to break and then we'll come in and do math and then science and then we'll do history. As for what they're learning, that's familiar as well. Look at your choices in your book. Does one of them look like that? Upper grades are taught a math series that's aligned with the common core curriculum. And when it comes to technology, we're in good shape. We have a, a very modern classroom. We have, you know, lots of computers and we have the smart board. So, you're already here, little pig. Principal the Pat Atkins says these kids take all the same tests and perform just as well as those in larger schools. In a large school, it's difficult for teachers to give that one-on-one -on -one when you have 30 kids in a class. As for the students, they agree, saying they spend less time waiting to ask questions and more time learning. I get help every day, mostly, like all the time. The teacher you don't have to wait for the teacher to go by the whole classroom before everybody's done with their work. The smaller class size also allows each student to spend time on the computer every day. They learn programming, foreign language, Litchi. even robotics. And what they lack in student population, you might say they make up for in pets, another tool that's used for teaching. It started with the bearded dragon, is the animal that's been here the longest, and then Arnie, the dog, who comes to school. Um, and then we have goats, we have rabbits, we have a turtle, a tortoise, and fish. Sharon McGay says these animals provide the additional benefits of teaching kids how to care for others and how to share responsibilities, not unlike the entire staff at Silver Fork. Aside from two teachers, the principal here is also the superintendent. Top of the key. There's also an aide who doubles as the bus driver and the food service worker. In some ways, they're more like a large family than a small school. The kids are like our kids, and um, when they graduate eighth grade and go off to high school, it's pretty sad. <laughs> I like the... While both of the Silver Fork teachers came from much larger schools, they each will tell you this is exactly where they want to be. They also say there's just okay. something special about this little schoolhouse in the woods. What it lacks in size, it makes up for in many other ways. It just offers opportunities way beyond the normal classroom, you know, to set examples for the kids and to, to help them, you know, with the things that they need help with. Because you really do, you become a family. And I think I expected that, but wasn't really prepared for how much of a family type atmosphere it is.